welcome to a brand new edition of T watches a scary movie. And yes, do not adjust your dials. You don't need to turn your screens off. It is me. I am back. We are here on video. I am so happy to be back on camera with y'all. I told you it was coming. Uh, had to finish some things up with the day job. Once I got those finished up, I had enough time to do editing and things like that. So here I am back gracing your video screens again. Uh, but for those of you who are tuning in for the first time, new episodes go up every Wednesday on YouTube. Yes, you can find our channel. Uh, it is very easy to find and you should subscribe because if you do get subscribed, you'll get the alerts of again when we put the new episodes up and I like to put those up every Wednesday. Uh, sometimes they might go up a little bit earlier, but that all depends on what's going on. Uh, but usually it's 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and that's at youtube.com slash C slash Theron Reynolds Scary Movie. Again, youtube.com slash C slash Theron Reynolds Scary Movie. Go subscribe to the page. You'll get alerted when new videos are going up. But we can't forget to talk about the Facebook group. Because if you go and you get into the Facebook group for T Watches a Scary Movie, you'll find out about our watch parties. We usually do one or two watch parties a week. Usually after the new episode goes up, we'll watch something that has to do with what we talked about in the episode. And then typically we'll do a bunch of scary TV shows as well. We actually did our scary TV watch party last night. Uh, we got to watch a little bit of uh, Hannibal and Black Mirror and Dexter and some Tales from the Crypt. And we actually watched for the first time the show Them because we finished up Spawn and Creep Show. And Them was really, really good. We also got caught up on Saw. So we finished up with Saw 3D, also known as Saw 7, also known as Saw the Final Chapter. Uh, but it's not because we still have one more Saw before the new Saw comes out. So... We will be watching Jigsaw next week, all in anticipation of the release of Spiral from the Book of Saw next Friday, May 14th. Uh, it's an exciting time. We got a lot of good horror coming out um, because this month, I forgot that not only do we have Spiral from the Book of Saw coming out, not only do we have Zack Snyder's Army of the Dead coming out, uh, but we have A Quiet Place 2 coming out this month as well. A Quiet Place 2 is coming out at the end of this month, and I'm so excited for that one. A Quiet Place was a, uh, oh, such a welcome surprise. Such a welcome surprise. Jim Halpert from The Office. Uh, John Krasinski doing a killer, killer job uh, his first time writing and directing his own film. Uh, so excited for the sequel. Got Killian Murphy in it. Um, oh, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so, so, so good. Uh, but I was trying to think of what we were going to talk about tonight. And I forgot, I didn't say the Facebook page. Um, so, excuse me, uh, you should go and check out our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash groups slash T Scary Movie. Again, that's facebook.com slash group slash T Scary Movie. Um, if you go there, you'll find out when we do our watch parties, you get the links for those. And then we have all these fun discussions sometimes in there as well, too. So uh, definitely go and join the Facebook groups. So you can get on that. And I am working to get this on podcast platforms as well because some of you have expressed that you do listen to the audio for this so that is my plan is i will get this on some podcast platforms sooner than later get caught up with the old episodes and start getting the new ones out at the same time because i do know that this can work as audio only as that's what we've been doing for the last month or so now which i appreciate your patience so that will be coming soon as well but in regards to what i wanted to talk about tonight uh, I was trying to decide, because I've been watching a lot of stuff lately. There were other movies I could talk about. You know, I still haven't talked about Psycho Gorman yet, which I'm going to do at some point. But I was thinking about uh, when I was watching Host. And when I was watching Host, uh, Rob Savage, the writer, uh, co-writer and the director of Host, is currently developing a new film called, uh, new, excuse me, a new game called Ghosts, featuring much of the returning cast of the movie Host. Got, there's a lot of rhyming in this. Uh, but the game is basically supposed to be a full motion video game where they're going to shoot basically this movie and gameplay is going to revolve somewhere around interacting with the movie that's been shot. And he mentioned Night Trap, like he was wearing a Night Trap shirt and everything as well. And that got me on this path of, man, 
I don't know how many uh, how many of you actually know about or have played the game Night Trap, and I feel that would be something awesome to actually go into and talk about. And then I was like, all right, well, what can I pair with that? And I started thinking about my other favorite horror games, and I thought something similar was this game called Until Dawn. And I was like, yeah, where do you go with that? So that's what we're talking about tonight is a couple horror games. We're talking uh, Night Trap and Until Dawn. And I'm so excited uh, to get into this with y'all. Uh, you know, growing up, I had a big, big relationship with video games. Uh, some of my early experiences were definitely with like Atari and ColecoVision. And I couldn't tell you which one though, just because it was 30 or more years ago. And it was something I never picked up again. Like I wasn't at that age to where something I played then was something I was gonna come back to later on. Like I did with Nintendo and everything like that. Um. But as I got older and the things I took an interest in started turning towards horror, I found myself playing more horror centric games as well. Like I was a big fan back in the day of uh, games like Alone in the Dark. Alone in the Dark was so awesome and so, so scary. Uh, that was great. Doom. Doom was fantastic as well, too. And Doom, Doom was a bit scary back in the day as well. Um, games like that were just so good. Um, and. Uh, the early 90s was an open field to the game industry uh, as it came, uh, a number of events would change everything. And one game in particular that we're going to be discussing is Night Trap. Now, if you've heard of this game before, it's probably because of the famed 93 United States congressional hearings on the subject of video game violence. Yeah, uh, this game was accused of featuring gratuitous violence and promoting sexual aggression towards women. Now, if you played video games prior to, let's say, 96, 97, uh, when we get, when we get, um, we got like the Saturn and the PlayStation around that time, then you know that's a bold faced lie because prior to like 96, 97, we really didn't have much in the way of video games that were overly violent or overly sexual or anything uh, kind of questionable like yeah like night Tra night trap was taking the fall for mortal Kombat because mortal Kombat featured blood and uh death and murder and things like that um but it ended up getting pulled into this controversy and it was one of the reasons for the creation of the entertainment software ratings board or the esrb and you know the esrb they're the ones who put those fun little letters on the front of your video games that say T or KA or M, and you usually don't pay attention to it anymore because you're an adult. Um, they are the ones who are responsible for that rating system that is going on every single video game. Now, Night Trap is what's known as a full motion video game, an FMV. Uh, basically, the creators shoot an entire movie and most of the time they're gonna do that with multiple scenes or multiple uh, multiple storylines. So like a character, like, you know, they go up the stairs this one time, then the next time they go down the stairs. Uh, they're gonna shoot like alternate ways of a lot of the same footage. And um, your gameplay usually involves making conversation or action choices. So basically you have to press something to get your character to step forward or jump or punch or kick or something like that. Um, even though it's filmed, if you don't press the button, then it doesn't happen. You get penalized. That's basically what that game, uh, the game kind of is. And the Sega CD at the time was known for these kinds of games. You know, Power Rangers, VR Troopers, uh, Sewer Shark. And uh, there was a market for it, for sure. There definitely was a market. The games weren't selling amazingly, but they were selling. And these were typically targeted towards an older set of gamers. So it might not surprise you to know that Night Trap initially was being developed as a Nightmare on Elm Street game. They were definitely trying to get the license in order to do a game that was going to go towards Freddy Krueger. And when they couldn't secure the license, they diverted and things became Night Trap instead. Now, the plot. You are a member of the Sega Control Attack Team or scat yes scat <laughs> um the team was alerted to the disappearance of five teenage girls uh who were last seen at the martin estate but you'll soon learn the sinister reason for the missing girls involves vampires 
From there, you take control of a number of security cameras in the Martin Estate. This also comes with control of Home Alone style traps littered through the house that you'll use to ensnare the vampires. And that's what the game ultimately delves into. You're basically monitoring the events happening inside and scanning each area, hoping to catch the roving augers, as they're called. Augers are the vampires. And you have the ability to save a lot of these characters or contribute towards their deaths. Now, the game's going to switch to different footage depending on whichever path you take. So if you end up saving one character, uh, but another character dies, you might get a different set of footage where if this character lives with that character dies, you get a different set of footage with that. So they shot, like I said before, a lot of different pathways so that they can make the game longer, even though as a whole, it's really not a lot of footage that's shot. It's like less than an hour, I want to say, uh, footage altogether when you think about it. Now, in terms of scares, keep in mind that Night Trap was originally developed for Hasbro. Uh, and you know Hasbro, like not like a different company. We're talking about the board game company, the kids game company. And there were already some mandates that they had to follow. For example, no reproducible violence. And if you don't know what that means, that means that they couldn't do anything that a child would be able to act out. Uh, they should not be able to do anything violent that's happening on the screen uh also the vampires they couldn't move or bite too quickly the idea being that uh kids would have a chance to escape from the monsters so there's no way that they'd be stuck and the monsters would absolutely get them uh and lastly because the vampires couldn't actually bite their victim like vampires would they had to use a device to drain the blood from their victims and the device uh, was designed to pass Hasbro's non-reproducible violent requirements. So it doesn't look even close to menacing in the least bit. So it's plausible there might be some scares for a very young age group. Uh, I mean, like anyone over the age of 12 could likely get a good good laugh at the, at the menace of the game, though. Um, yeah, like if you're over 12, you're going to laugh your ass off at this game. And that's not to say it's bad. It's just that um, it, it's very clear that as as well done as this game is, because I do like the production value of the game, um, there's something inherently 90s about it, and like that's a very warm feeling. Uh, kind of like when, you know, uh, anybody from the era of the Brady Bunch, if they watch that, like it's it gives you like a warm feeling of like how things were back then and everything too, you know? And Night Trap definitely is like, oh man, this is this is very 90s. This is very, very 90s. Um, so it, it's corny. It's corny as all hell, but there's something very charming about how corny Night Trap is, even if it's not scary in the least bit. I mean, the theme that they hit every time the augers show up, that is a little that's a little freaky. I like that theme. Their their soundtrack in this is uh, is pretty good. Um, but the game is actually fun. There's a bit of strategy with it. Uh, to set off the traps, you have to actually have the correct code because they give you a bunch of colors and you have to use one of the colors to activate a trap. And the thing is, you have to watch the footage. So you might have to go from one scene to another scene to another scene and catch the characters talking about it in order to activate the trap. Now, of course, if you miss it, you can figure it out by order of elimination. But if you miss enough of the augers going around, enough of the vampires wandering through the house, you can still lose the game. So you really have to be like very, very quick and on your feet with going around in the house and getting the right video. Um, uh, and, but, but it's a lot of fun because once you get in the hang of catching the augers and setting the traps up, uh, the traps are super fun. They're goofy as all hell, but it's super fun to catch a lot of the augers in the act that when you eventually miss one, you get super frustrated. Cause usually if you're missing one, it's by like a second or so, or the color just changed and you didn't change your color in time. Um, so it just gets really frustrated, especially when you're doing really good. And that's saying a lot about the gameplay that you enjoy it so much that you get frustrated when you mess up. Um, and it's also very interesting too, because you can set off traps that ultimately kill the good characters as well. And again, because they filmed so many different pathways for this game to go, it is entirely possible to kill characters that you shouldn't ultimately be killing and get a bad ending to the game. Um, now, the game is really, really ambitious for its time because 
As I mentioned before, the Sega CD had a number of games like this, number of full motion video games um, that it also had out. But the thing was is that all those other games were typically pre-existing footage. So like Power Rangers or VR Troopers or uh, Mass Rider. Like they would play episodes of those TV shows and just incorporate a game into it where you're pressing a button to get to the next part of that footage, basically. And Night Trap actually filming a full movie, like a full movie for this video game. And that is the sole purpose. Uh, again, as I mentioned, the production value is super high on it. And it's so heartwarmingly 90s. And I'm excited to play this game with y'all tonight. Um, I, I'm so excited for you to see it in the watch party because I I don't know how else you could see it except for this is like the camp. Like if you're going to show somebody something that absolutely represents 90s culture, this would definitely need to be a part of that. I'm excited for it. Make sure you hit the watch party. And that takes us to Until Dawn. So my entire life, I've definitely never been an anti-PlayStation guy. And it's not like I ever had to choose because I always owned every system. And I just tended to think that PlayStation only really had like five to ten games on it. Um, usually single player cinematic experiences versus overall just bigger games and more fun games that I like to play on things like Xbox or Nintendo systems, you know. And again, not saying any of them are better than the other because I always owned them all. I never ultimately had to make that kind of decision. But... When PlayStation went big, it went big, and it did that a lot on horror. And that resulted in games like Until Dawn. Now, this featured a cast of, at the time, Hollywood notables, including Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D.'s uh, Brett Dalton, Heroes Hayden Panettiere, and Oscar winner, or future Oscar winner, Rami Malek. Uh, Until Dawn tells the story of a group of friends who reunite after a terrible tragedy at a snow-covered lodge to reminisce, only to find they're now being hunted by a killer. This game is hands down what I would say is the best game on the PlayStation 4. And that is saying a lot for a system that got The Last of Us Part Two. Uh, it got God of War, it got Horizon Zero Dawn, amongst others. But as a big horror fan, I don't know what else possibly could. Uh, in a way, it's very similar to Night Trap. The cast of the game uh, of Until Dawn wore motion capture suits, and they acted out the entire game. Um, so basically, an entire film was shot, just like Night Trap was. Like They shot an entire film for the purpose of this game. The only difference is they weren't on location or anything for Until Dawn. But the gameplay has you controlling several of these characters uh, with different perspectives as the events unfold. And the creators wanted to include a number of different homages to uh, horror films out there like Psycho, The Haunting, The Exorcist, Halloween, Poltergeist. And you can definitely pick up a lot of that throughout this game as the game progresses through a lot of different horror films horror types horror genres whatever you want to call them like how you can have like a uh, creature feature or a ghost story or a uh, you know serial killer mass killer type of film um and as you keep going through these different horror genres throughout the game each one is more effective than the previous chapter. And especially because you don't see it coming. Like the game gives you a bit of time to get kind of acquainted with like the horror movie you're in right now. And you're like, all right, I have an idea of where we're going with this. I know what it's going to ultimately be, who the killer is going to be, who's going to be haunting us, things like that. Um, and then it changes and you're like, oh shit. All right. Well, I'm completely wrong now because we're now going this pathway instead totally different from what I thought it was going to end up being. And I love that because it keeps you on your toes the entire time. Um, and uh, in the 30 years since Night Trap, the attention given to acting in video games is on par with Oscar winning films now. Again, you have to think about it. Rami Malek was in this. He did this damn video game. And... I say that to say that the cast that includes some folks that we definitely are aware of, like have some really great performances in it, honestly. And 
I, I just mean that a game like Night Trap back in the early 90s wasn't there to be this, like, you know, amazing game that people are going to go back and say, man, the acting was on point for Night Trap. It's just amazing film, you know? That was not why it was made. Like, the technology was impressive. That is why, they, like, the game was made, was show off this new technology. And it did a good job, in my opinion. did a really good job of that. But you don't look back at the acting as being amazing. But Until Dawn is an example of basically making a movie and calling it a video game. You're just controlling this movie at this point. And uh, again, you know, like the terror is real in this. Like they shift through the, all these different styles of horror. And I found myself on the edge of my seat uh, during a lot of it. Like especially the portion involving the uh, the mass killers in this. Uh I was like was so worried with the different characters like hiding and trying to stay hidden and not get caught because I didn't want to get gruesomely murdered. Uh, so much fun. But there's a later section in the game though that has so many jump scares in it. It's so unreal. Um, the game is just, it, it's a really, really phenomenal, really phenomenal game. And it has you controlling your character like any third person video game. But more of it is about controlling the dialogue choices with other characters as that shapes the relationships through the game. So um, whether you're nice to this character or whether you're mean to this character might result in them choosing to save you later on. You know, if somebody's trying to kill you or whether they're going to end up leaving you to die. Um, and then you also get these decisions that might affect the character dying or not as well too so you can decide sometimes if someone's going to live or die as well so it's like a really twisted version of saw in some cases uh and there are multiple paths and endings in this game uh the fact that all the characters you control have the ability to both live and die really gives a lot of a lot of ways that the story can play out because you do get very vastly different endings depending on who makes it to the end of the game and what you ultimately discover and that also brings up a lot of moral dilemmas too because then it's like well crap like do I do do I then actually want to kill some of these characters because I'm so interested to see what might happen and see how they die and live out you know these horror movie fantasies or am I gonna play the hero and try to save everybody I possibly can? Um, and the only real downside I think to all of it is the fact that, like I said, it does include all these different horror genres. But when we get to what ends up being the last genre the last one that we're going to go to in the game um, and invalidate so much of everything else. It just makes everything else be like, ah, this is dumb. Like, and, and not, not to a terrible extent because you can still appreciate it and say there's, there's a lot of genius in it, which I definitely do. But that is absolutely a complaint I've heard is that the way that the game gets to the final chapter makes the other ones look kind of stupid in retrospect. And I would very much disagree with that. I think there's a place for all of it throughout this game, honestly. And that each one is a different kind of fun because you're getting to enjoy all these uh, all these different kind of horror movies at the same time, you know? Um, but that's going to wrap it up for us tonight, folks. Uh, we're just going to do these two. Now, I do want you to head over to the Facebook group uh, because you can find the link for our watch party. And as I mentioned, I'm going to be playing a bit of Night Trap tonight. Uh, we're going to go through. I'm going to show you a bit of how the story works. Then we're going to play a bit of the game, have some fun with that. And then we're going to watch the 2002 video game adaptation of Resident Evil. We're going to be watching Resident Evil tonight. Watch some zombies, man. That's what we are going for. So uh, I appreciate your time as always. Y'all make sure to check out some of our older episodes uh, that you can see up here, down here, and subscribe as well, too. Um, folks, love you tuning in. I'm T. We've been talking scary movies. Stay scared.